All right, so I'm going to go straight to the point. I'm going to talk about uh, the issues that this TV has because I've seen a lot of criticism. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. And most of those, most of those channels are focusing on just like the negatives of this TV. So uh, I'm going to talk about the blooming issues this TV has. I've seen a lot of people also talking about the lack of Dolby Vision support from Samsung which we already know that Samsung doesn't support Dolby Vision. Uh, a lot of people also focusing on HDMI 2.1. This TV only has one port, so they're really focusing on that too. And also the price, you know, so those are like most talk topics about this TV. Now, the way I review TV, uh, TVs is just like very practical. I don't get any technical about it. I don't have any graphs or sheets or 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 you know the computers to measure everything no i don't i don't do that if, if you want to see that go to vincent Tio channel he's he's very technical his videos sometimes are kind of boring but he is very interesting you know so if you want to learn that which i think is cool too i watched his videos go to his channel i'm more into practical i'm going to open up uh, open up a product pull it out connect it and start using it right away i don't think a lot of people are going to open up a product and go through their calibration settings professional calibrator or maybe a call a professional calibrator and pay an additional three four hundred dollars to come and calibrate your tv at night and, and day and dark and loud and nothing i don't think hell i have a lot of people who've asked me Joster, what is the best 4K TV under $400 or under $300? You know, I don't think they're going to pay any additional $300, $400 to someone come and calibrate their TV. So I'm more into practical stuff, practical things that you're going to use, I use as a regular Joe. All right, so the blooming issue that I see on this TV, it's only when I'm seeing this TV off angle. So practically... I am not going to watch any TV, not just this one, any other TV. And I'm, I'm not going to be standing right next to it, watching it off angle all the time. You know, normally I'm going to sit right in front of it and just start enjoying my gaming or my movies right in front of the TV. When you're watching a TV off angle, well, then you're going to have problems, especially with VA panels like this one. You have uh, these TVs, these uh, viewing panels, they don't have good viewing angles. So colors, they shift. And in this case, there's blooming. There's blooming. You can, you can actually see it. And I've shown you before in my previous videos. So practically, it doesn't really bother me because I'm always going to be sitting in front of it. Even if I'm at a little bit of, of angle, there's still no problems, no issues. The problem is when you're standing and when you're like really off angle. That's where I'm, I'm start seeing blooming problems. Now you tell me, how do you watch your TV? Are you always gonna be standing right next to it? Are you going always going to be off angle? Because if you are, then you should consider buying an OLED instead, or maybe also a nano cell TV, which is an IPS. Those TVs have uh, better viewing angles, so you probably won't have any issues. You know, so that's one thing. All right, so now let's go to the other problem that I've seen is that Samsung doesn't support Dolby Vision. To be straight honest with you, I have TVs that support Dolby Vision. The Sony X900H does support Dolby Vision, and this one supports only HDR10. It also has HDR10+. Plus. Now, do I see a big difference between those two different HDR formats? No. In real world situations, I don't see a big difference. Maybe it is more, it is better on paper because yes, Dolby Vision has more of a dynamic HDR, which is changes with the different scenes and adapts the, the brightness and the darkness and everything in every scene. But do I see it in that when I'm seeing a movie in action? I don't see it. It's, it's a very slight difference. So it's not a big deal for me. Now, if you have movies that support Dolby Vision, Trust me, it also supports HDR10. So you can still enjoy HDR. All right, so now let's talk about the other problem. Only one port is HDMI 2.1. Now, tell me something. Be honest with me. 
Do you have both consoles, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5? Because if you do, well, you do have some sort of problem because when you want to switch consoles, you're going to have to unplug one and plug the other one, which is, I mean, it's not a lot of work, but it's, yeah, it is nicer just to have everything plugged in together and not to be messing with, right? But if you're lucky enough to have one of those consoles, are you going to be using both at the same time? You're not. Or most likely, a lot of people are not even going to have both consoles. They're probably going to buy just one and just use one port. So that's it. It shouldn't be any, any big deal. Now, another thing that I'm seeing is just like HDMI 2.1. The only difference is that it has a 4K 120 hertz support. Samsung, every single port, you're going to have 4K 60, HDR, variable refresh rate or FreeSync, uh, 1440p 120 hertz support and also auto low game latency and one port has EARC support so that is the only difference having HDMI 2.1 4k 120 hertz now if you think about this think about this how many games support 4k 120 hertz how many games there's not even a lot of them and the games that do support that feature look like shit. You're better off playing 4K60 with HDR. I mean, in order for these consoles to run at 120 hertz, they have to sacrifice something else. It could be resolution or textures. They don't. They just don't look the same. They don't have the same quality because they need to. They can't run 4K with high settings at 120 hertz that is the truth the only way possible is through a powerful pc which you're not going to use this to be as a pc monitor so what is the point of having so many hdmi 2.1 ports when can the rest of the ports can do uh everything else correctly and have the same features except for one 4k 120 so to me honestly practically i don't care if it's only one port. I mean, it's nice to have all the ports, like uh, LG has all the ports with HDMI 2.1, but do you really use them all? All right, so now let's talk about price. This is something that I see a lot, and yes, even I am with you guys on this one. This is a brand new product. This is a brand new model, 2021, just came out of the oven. So what do you think companies are going to do with a brand new product? They're going to price it up the highest as possible as they can. This is normal from any company. Last year is the same thing. And what happens? After a few months, price starts to drop. So a lot of you guys are saying, well, why should I pay you know, $1,600? Because I pay $1,600 for this 55-inch version. And then uh, with plus taxes, it went up to like $1,750, something like that. When right now you can buy the CX OLED from uh, LG for $1,500. Yeah, $1,500 for the 55 inch and the 65 inch is like $2,000. By the way, there's going to be like uh, links in the description of the video. You guys want to check it out if you want to buy one. But um, what I'm saying is the CX is last year. It's a 2020 model TV. I bet you that the new G1 from this 2021, the new OLED from uh, LG, it's not going to be $1,500. So you can't compare a product from this year to a product price from last year. It's not going to be the same. Just look at Sony, brand new OLED TVs. They're starting at like around $3,000. $3,000 for like a 55-inch TV from Sony. You know, so you can't compare a brand new product to a last year product, the same price. They're not going to have the same price, but I can bet you that this tv just in a few more months it's going to be like 12 or 1300 dollars or even black friday it's going to be like 1100 dollars that's when you start buying this these products right now but as a brand right now it's brand new so what are you expecting to pay thousand dollars for it so at the end of the day buy the product that works best for you you want to buy an OLED because it has great picture quality? That's fine. But think of how you're going to use it. Are you going to use it as a PC monitor? 
Are you going to be gaming like 10, 12 hours straight without turning off the TV? Are you going to have that TV right next to a big window when there's a lot of sunlight coming in or maybe there's a lot of ambient light in there? Are you going to use this TV uh, and then you have kids that watch cartoons all day, every day, or maybe your wife uh, forgets to turn off the TV and she goes to sleep and the TV is running all day, every day? Well then, my friend, an OLED is not going to do any good for you. Just in a couple of years, your OLED is going to be done, it's going to be dead, you're going to have uh, screen burn issues. Although LG has improved a lot, but that issue is still there. It's not gone, it's still there. So think about how you're going to use your TV. This one right here, for example, it doesn't have any screen burn issues. This TV also gets very bright, so it's good under sunlight, also it's good under a uh, bright room, you know. If you're going to use it as a PC or maybe you're going to be gaming a lot, well, this TV, you don't have to worry about uh, having any uh, permanent screen burn. It doesn't have that problem. So that's the way I do things here. Practical. Whatever works, it works. What doesn't work, I mention it too. All right, guys. So this is sort of like a rant video. You know, I just wanted to touch base on that. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Joster. I'll see you guys in the next one. Joster out.